welcome to another solar install by Alps Electrical. Uh, this is a job we finished just yesterday and it's always nice to come back the next day uh, to show the customer what uh, their solar is generating and it's absolutely bucketing down. Uh, so that's great, um, but I'm sure we will get another sunny day uh, for them to enjoy saving some money. So this solar job had its challenges uh, in the way that it's a beautiful house. It backs onto the River Tees. It's absolutely beautiful, but as you can see, it's very higgledy-piggledy. Lots of different uh, areas and nooks and crannies, and it was quite a challenge. Firstly, where do we put the inverter and the batteries? How do we get the AC from the board to the inverter? That was a challenge, even because the, the gap down the side of the house was difficult to get down. We've got eight panels on the roof. Because of the space that we had, we had to, uh, we tried to maximize that space. So we went with eight J solar 500 watt panels. So I think they look fantastic. We've got the bird protection around the outside. So yeah, we just got finished yesterday. We had a, a break in the rain, thankfully. Uh, because it has been raining quite a few, quite a bit recently, uh, but yesterday was nice and sunny. So, yeah, let's have a little look around. Hey, come up. So we had this uh, loft area boarded out. Um, it was definitely with its challenges where to put everything in this house with the layout. Um, but we decided to put uh, the inverter and batteries up in here because it's an ideal ideal space for it. Um, we also put in a nice uh, new LED button and pull switch. So as you can see, we've got the Fox uh, 3.68 kilowatt inverter, which is one of our favorites to install. And then we've got, uh, this customer's gone with 10 kilowatts of batteries with a, with a BMS on top. So each one of these modules is 2.5, but it's actually about 2.45 kilowatts each. Um, then, the, and the great thing about these is they're stackable. So the customer could add another two and a half kilowatt or another five or anything up to 10. So you can have a maximum of 20, um, which I think with his usage being about four kilowatts uh, per annually, I think this will actually suffice. But that's the great thing about these batteries that they are um, easily added to. So the route out for our DC cables came up along and then jumped out outside the, onto the tiles with some flexi conduit. And then what we've had to do is run up because the actual roof that we're, the solar panels are on is above this roof. So we've ran up that wall in a bit of conduit and then some flexi conduit back out onto the main roof. So a nice neat install. So this was an existing junction box because it uh, feeds the annex outside. So we actually popped into the back of that, which was ideal. Give us the opportunity to gland our armored in here. Uh, we've ran along and all the way up to that junction box at the top. So this is where we came in. We came in from the back on the other side with our steel wire armoured into the junction box and then straight into this board here. We were, fortunately, there's plenty of spare ways to be used, but we had to change this module here for a type A ICD. Uh, we've got our solar on that 16 there. So that was good. And then we've got your generation meter, first AC isolator, and then we always like to leave our nice uh, solar handover pack, which contains the uh, isolation procedure and schematic, and then PVA, PVA array test reports and other commissioning checklists. So we like to leave them on site. 